All right, welcome. Uh, I I'm I'm pumped today. I have John Johnson on the call today, and we're going to be doing an interview. Uh, this guy, you know, too, man, I'm pumped too. <laughs> uh, this guy may not know it, but I've I've I've, I've followed him for you know for years since he's come here. Just looking at some of the stuff that he posts throughout uh, his social media, talking about some of the great companies that he's worked with. For anybody who don't know John John Johnson, I mean, he's an expert in terms of like creating an identity for your business, showing your business how to be able to connect with its audience and and share what's unique about its business in itself. And uh, he's from the Midwest. He grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and he moved. Uh, I think he he had a stint where he was in Arizona for a bit, but he came up here and started a small studio, which is, is, is the, the, uh, I guess you could say the Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci work of building brand identities. So, uh, without further ado, John, welcome. How are you? I'm sweating now, Alex. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm doing well, man. I'm just glad to be here. Feeling blessed. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm pumped too, man. Um, uh, I, I know you're extremely busy and there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of businesses right now are just, they're trying to figure out everything on top of all the other stuff that's happening. Um, but I want to just dig a little bit into your story. Tell me about where did, wh- where's the humble beginnings for John B. Johnson? How did you start getting in the, the world of brand identity as you are now? Uh, and the humble beginnings go back to college where I was getting my my master's degree in architecture. And I thought I was always going to be an architect, right? Um, And I got my MBA and realized how terrible the architectural industry is, especially here in America. (laughs) And I actually practiced architecture for about two years after I graduated um, in, and I went to Phoenix um, to practice. And um, just realized I didn't want to be an architect. Um, didn't didn't see myself doing that type of work creatively. And um, after I left that firm, I did my first startup um, back in 2014. And that startup was a mobile app startup. Um, did everything from building the brand, building the business model, um, building the mobile app, you know, building a following, events, you know, all of that. And and um, you know, long story short, that, that startup ended up failing. And about a year and a half later, right before we raised our first round of funding, and um, the biggest thing, I think the most successful thing we did in that startup was build a brand. We built a loyal following uh, that spanned, you know, all the way to the UK of people that wanted to engage. Wow. And, feel free. and I remember a friend telling me, like, you know what? You, you built an incredible brand no matter what like yeah the company didn't make it but you you built a brand everybody knows who feel free is even though it never made a dollar right and um those words just vibrated um in my ears and and um i worked in a um, social incubator nonprofit called um, seed spot that actually helps accelerate um impact driven um startups and I worked there for about a year after my entrepreneurial game you know, failed a few times and I got married and um, I worked a lot with early stage entrepreneurs um, and helped them realize who they are, tell their story. And I found a passion for that. And uh, my wife got a job at Amazon um, a year later and we were like, yeah, Jeff, we'll come to Seattle. And uh <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm here in Seattle and, and my buddy, Troy Thomas, who's my business partner, incredible graphic designer, is living here. And I filed the LSC um, about 10 days after landing here in Seattle and a small studio was born. And um, we, 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 went, we set out on, the, on a mission to help um, people understand who they are and how to translate who they are into the marketplace, which is what we call branding. I love it. I love it. That's a that's an incredible story, and and I look how I love how you you share the transition points. You know, with that being said, you know, uh, you've been able to figure this thing out from scratch a few times. 
there's a lot of businesses that have been able to figure out a way to, to build their business and they, they, they have customers and stuff like that. But right now we're in a unique situation where if they were dependent on the foot traffic, they may have to make a shift online. And I know that you have done that countless times for tons of other businesses. When a business is in, a, in the crossroads and they just don't know where to even start, what do you recommend are like the first couple things they can do to just get the ball rolling in terms of building or even planning for the, the brand identity? That's a good question, man. I, I like to, I like to call that the grassroots of, of any business is like going to the most basic form of branding. And if you think about the most basic form of branding, it's, it's who we are as people, um, in my opinion. Um, so I would say, Alex, have you, have you realized who you are? Like, who are you? What are your values? Right? What are your strengths? Um, what is your story? Right? What are experiences that you've had in your life that make you uniquely equipped to do the work that you're doing or you're do, do the work that you're attempting to do in the marketplace? Because ultimately a brand is only as strong as the people behind it uh -huh. right? and the products behind it. So, you know, you can't build a strong brand without having strong people behind it. And I, what I love to do with my clients and also I've done it with many entrepreneurs um, that weren't clients is just help them realize who they are and help them reflect on who they are. Reflect internally so that you can project authentically, externally. And if you have not done the necessary reflection internally, um, odds are you're not going to be off the, be able to authentically express yourself um, externally, especially in the marketplace, especially right now in the world that we live in. Uh, people can smell fake, you know, 10,000 miles away. All right. So we have to be authentic with how we're telling our story and authentic with how we're expressing who we are as people, but also what we do as a business and the products that we have created to serve. Um, our customers. I love it. And and that, that actually leads me to, uh, you know, a, a follow up question. You know, you, you go through that grassroots process and you're starting to figure out things with this day and age. I feel like a lot of business owners, especially entrepreneurs always expect something to happen instantly. Like they want to try to get something done in, in, in like 30 days or you, you hear about all these, these different things that promote that. What are you, what's your thoughts or expectations around when somebody is building a brand? Should they be trying to brush it or is it something that takes months and months to really build? Yeah, that, that depends, Alex. I, I've, seen, I've seen brands be built in four days that were passionate and people were passionate about. Dose, you know, was, was built in four days. So it, only way that that can happen that quickly is if, once again, you've done the necessary reflection. You know exactly who you are. You know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly how to tell the world what you're doing also, which typically people don't know that. Typically, there's a lot of work still to be done. So depending on at what phase you are, um, how much work you've done, not only on yourself, but also on your expertise and, and the service that you're attempting to provide or the product that you're attempting to provide to the world. Um, I think that that will be the main factor, the main variable as to how long it takes. So I've done brands that take four days for me and my team to, to knock out. Um, I've also done brands that have taken four to six months um, just because there was a lot of work to do, a lot of turning over stones, a lot of um, revealing um, that needs to take place. And that's what I do. That's my work. That's why I'm an expert in this is, is I, I know how to get below the surface of things. I know how to get to the raw, um, the raw, real um, nature of who people are and what they're attempting to do. And then to translate that into the marketplace is, is not easy, especially when you're trying to be different than everyone else. And there's just so much clutter and so much noise out there yeah so with with you know so i understand that you know depending on how clear somebody is on on their true values at a personal level uh they can be able to ramp up a, a brand pretty quickly which is is cool to hear 
you know, that uh, considering a lot of other areas, it takes a little more time to get some traction. With that being said, you know, once a person puts together these 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 frameworks and they understand their grassroots, is there um, and I'm just coming from a, a complete like novice, if I'm a new person, what are should I be thinking next about what tools I need to put together the, the website part or or should I be finding a graphic designer? Because what I see a lot of um, and I've ran into it, you know, businesses that are established and they have a presence offline. And they're transitioning online. They don't know, you know, should they, should they be just hired web designer, and should they expect that web designer to get their vision? So I guess the, the a big question for you is: once a person gets that clarity with you know their 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 morals and values, is there a linear approach to what they should focus on next, or is it? What's your thoughts around that? Yeah. Um... That's a good question also, Alex. I think one of the things that I found in my experience is that um, people end up, you know, signing a, a death uh, certificate when they try to go engage consultants before they've actually established, you know, exactly who they are and what they're attempting to do. So you try to go to a web designer that has no experience in branding, has no experience in marketing, or no experience in copywriting, um, and you say, hey, I need a website and you haven't done any of the necessary work. That's why you see so many terrible websites out there um, because they're just piecing it together. Oh yeah, just give us the copy and they put it in there. It's absolutely, it's like, it, it's heart wrenching for me to see. Um, so I always suggest that you do that necessary work first. Um, from there, as long as you have done the right work and, and what we do is we provide an identity report um, typically to our clients that we work with that gives all of the foundational work um, to our clients so that they could they can continue working with us, which is typically how how it happens. But it ends up becoming like a contract between us creat creatively. Hey, remember, this is what we've identified as being who you are, right? So when, as we move forward into the design process, which is very relative and very emotional, and design is very, very hard to keep contained, right, in a logical box. Um, we always revert back to the contract. We always revert back to the identity report, right? Remember, what are your values? Uh -huh. um, how do we articulate the industry? How do we articulate this, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, yes, my, my answer to your question is that, uh, you know, that next step is always going to be about distribution. How are you going to distribute your brand, your product, or your service to the world, to your customers, to your audience, to your users? So depending on your business type, um, you typically are going to do that via social media. Um, social media is the cheapest way of doing it first and foremost, right? So yep. think about bootstrapping something or you know building an MVP. You can build a website, um, you can build a community on Facebook for free. Right? I've seen yep. people do it, many followers on Facebook for free. It just depends on your business type. Um, you know, Obviously, people are looking for a website and you know, having a website, having a social media following, you know, having a mobile application, uh, having uh, you know, a brick and mortar you know, location or an office address, all of that just adds to your validity as a brand, right? Because you, you, if you only have a Facebook page, you know, that, that says a certain thing about your business, yeah. right? Um, compared to having a Facebook page, as Instagram, Twitter, you know, website, all of it's consistent with the same language, same messaging, you're active on all of them. You know, you have a YouTube channel, you're posting videos all the time, right? So um, you have to identify that as a business owner and that's what we typically do with our clients is we identify where do you where are you going to be distributing this to your audience? Where is the best way to do it? Okay, we're going to build you a system to make sure that you're distributing this brand and this in your products and your services in a consistent way across whatever medium that you need to distribute it on. And I think that that's where a lot of business owners run into trouble, especially when you talk about digital at right, the digital age is you have a, a a graphic designer or a freelancer give you a logo. Okay, well, that logo has to live on many different platforms, uh -huh. right? And have they been able to translate that logo 
into all of the platforms? What are the color palettes? What fonts are you using, right? What are the standards and the guidelines that go, that empower you as a business owner to, to communicate a consistent image and a consistent message across all of the different mediums that we live on currently in this digital age? I love it. And I, I feel like you're kind of reading my mind because as questions pop up, you're answering the questions before I can get them out. <laughs> but I'll, 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 I'll ask this one uh, and you may have more information about it. One of the things that I see a lot of, uh, you know, just working with, with clients just in different worlds is they're always trying to check the pulse to see what's working or, um, uh, you know, see what's not working. For me in the email marketing world, I could easily check the pulse on a campaign and, and say, OK, you know, the open rates are really bad. Um, you know, in, in the, in the branding world, you, you design this brand and you, you, um, uh, you know, pick a certain style and a certain approach. And this actually may turn into two questions. How do you, you know, uh, is it okay, you know, when you do launch a brand to make pivots with that, or is that just, or should you stay true to who you really are in that sense and just stick, stick through the process with the brand that you've created? and work till you find your tribe. Um, what are your thoughts are, are around that? Man, that, that's, that's also, I think, very relative um, based on the business type and also based on the entrepreneur, I think, or the founder. Um, but my, my, my default is always, you know, to ask the question, who is going to be spending the most time promoting this brand, mm. moving the brand forward? Okay. Oh, it's you? Okay. Well, then it should be a representation of who you are because are you going to rep something that doesn't, you know, depict who you are? Are you going to wear a brand that, that you don't believe in, that you don't love? Uh -huh. And if you're not, then why would you do anything that you wouldn't, like, that you don't love? Why would you allow yourself to move forward with something that you're not passionate about? So I always tell my clients that the reason why you do branding is because you want to give your audience, you want to give your partners, your stakeholders, your users a flag to wave, right? And you want to create something that you're going to be passionate about, you know, obviously putting your blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, but you're also going to get others to be passionate about it and want to wave that flag for you and with you to all of their audience. Uh -huh. If you don't create a powerful or a strong representation of who you are, man, you people, people are not going to put it on their, they're not going to wear it on their t-shirts. They're not going to wear it as a hat. They're not going to put it on their social media, you know, because they, it's, it's ugly and it doesn't represent who they are or it doesn't feel authentic, right? Uh -huh. Remember, people could smell that from a long, long way away. So um, I think that the biggest thing I always press into the founder and to the founding team, um, as long as they're okay with it, and as long as they love it, then I believe it's going to work. Um, we saw that with Instagram, when Instagram rebranded, um, a lot of backlash on Instagram for rebranding and going from you know iconic camera to this new, you know, much more, um, you know, um, simple, um, yeah. you know, iconic mark with the gradients and all of that. A lot of backlash. People were just dissing it. But at the end of the day, it's not about <clears throat> the audience. Like, they're going to continue using the products, right? They, it's more so, you know, is, does this, is this going to continue to motivate the team yeah. that's spending yeah. countless hours and countless days of their life working on this thing because without the team behind it then everything else doesn't exist and i think people forget that i love it and um i think we've got a little bit of time for one more question so the the last question that i've been asking everybody if you had one piece of advice for you know a, a business owner that's really just trying to figure out their brand and uh, what would that piece of advice be if there's only one thing you could share with them? Um, I, I think I already said it, man. You, you got to start with yourself. Um, start internally. Who are you? Um, if you are a part of a team, 
then the whole team needs to do the same reflection of asking yourself the question of who are you? What is your identity? Because I, I really struggle with the world that we live in where people so, are so easy to put a brand identity out there and it's just like candy. Oh yeah, sure, I'll make you a logo. <laughs> sure, I'll do this. Sure, yeah, here's this, here's this quick you know, 30 minute website that I made that making me millions of dollars. Great, you know, that's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, how long does it last? Is it really impacting people's lives? Is it impacting your life? Is it making you happy, right? Is it, is it helping you feel more authentic as a human being, especially in the world that we're living in right now? Uh -huh. Authenticity and feeling, right? Vulnerability, all those things are what's going to live on past this, I believe. Yep. The age of, you know, crappy brands and, you know, all they care about is products and tech and services and yada, 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 have no human aspect of them. Uh -huh. I think that age is over, um, in my opinion. And we're going to be moving into a new age that's going to be all about humanity. And if you don't have any humanity in your brand, in your identity, then you're not going to make it. I love it. Well, the, the, before we go, I wanted to uh, recently you guys just launched a new product that you're really passionate about that is is designed to to push forward the conversations with what's happening right now with, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the police brutality and some of the violence that's going on. I'd love for you to just touch a little bit on that and what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I had a moment where I was. I just felt like I needed to do something more. I couldn't go about business as usual as a, as a business owner. And I decided that I was going to put our clients on hold and um, we were going to focus our team's efforts on, you know, moving the needle forward on what's happening in our, our country around um, racial inequity and racial injustice. So as a, as a black business owner, I just felt obligated that I needed to live authentically. I needed to live, um, um, in integrity, um, because our mission as a small studio is to use our gifts to bring peace to people's lives. And I had that moment of, of, of conviction and I was like, you know what, we're going to do something. So, um, we put our minds together along with some other people and creatives and Dr. Julia Garcia and, and dose was, was created. Um, so give a dot dose dot co, um, was created in four days. And we set out with the intention of, of using technology to unite, heal, and evolve our nation through um, the questions that are rarely asked and the experiences that are already lived. So we're actually amplifying the Black experience on this website by allowing um, people to share their experiences around racial inequity and racial injustice but at the same time allowing others that may have never experienced those situations to come to this website and to actually hear and listen and um, under try to understand these people's stories, right? So imagine being a, a black person that shares about, you know, being pulled over by a police officer um, and fearing for your life. If you've never been pulled over by a police officer and feared for your life, then, you would never know how that feels, uh -huh. right? Especially if you don't know anybody that's ever done that or that's ever feared for their life. So you would go onto this platform and you would answer that question. We call them doses. You would answer that question, yes or no. And then if you said no, you can actually now reflect on, you know, why do you think somebody would fear for their life if they've uh -huh. never done anything? And finally, you would actually be given an experience of somebody that has responded um, has actually here for their life when getting pulled over by a police officer. So we call these doses. We want to create a platform that amplifies experiences, allow people to observe those experiences, and at the same time, allow people to um, better process their feelings um, right now around racial inequity and racial injustice because um, social media, I don't feel, is the, is the place to process your feelings and yeah. process your emotions. <laughs> Um, or to even understand people better, because as we know, um, the digital age is, is filled with a lot of um, uh, a lot of noise. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank you for sharing uh, Dose. And also, guys, if you guys need any branding uh, help 
uh, we have an expert right here, John, a small studio. He's going to be speaking at the Digital Shift Summit. So I am so pumped and thank you so much for joining me.